so uh, we're going to get into this hive today. I've looked at a lot of these uh, earlier this week, and there's some good honey all up in this top box, and uh, we're going to try to take that. So I'm just going to remove this lid. Uh, there's a couple bees hanging out on the top. Let them know I'm coming. I'm giving them a slight puff of smoke. Beautiful. Nice thick comb. Beautiful thick honey. Wow. It's a gorgeous blend of fall colors. And I'm going to give this a brief shake. So we'll see if they stay happy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, this box actually has plenty of activity in it. Uh, the bees are continuing to draw out more comb, bring in the remaining part of the fall harvest. Once again, there's still plenty, plenty in here, but it's, it's not fully ready. You know, so we've got a ton of open cells here, plenty of space for the bees to keep filling it up. I'm going to let them keep doing that. I'm just going to use my tool here to break the seal. Bees will use a product called propolis that they take from the environment and use it almost like a glue to seal things together. There's plenty of bees in here. This next layer is a, a metal rack with slots in it that all of these worker bees can go through, but the queen is unable to go through. And so we call it a queen excluder. And I'm just gonna make sure that the hive itself is continuing to stay healthy. Make sure they've got plenty of resources down below. Jeez. Yep. Once again, the smoke doesn't hurt the bees it just simply lets them know I'm coming hopefully calms them down a little bit I don't need to dig through every frame in here but what I'm doing as a beekeeper is I'm looking down in between the frames by the way there's zillions of bees between every single one of these so it's a healthy population uh, what I'm looking for are just signs that the, the queen is still alive and healthy I would say just simply by the population itself uh, that she's actually doing just fine. Bees can be very friendly. Got a good focus on there? Yeah. This is a younger bee. The younger bees are less likely to sting. It's usually the old, cantankerous, older bees that are a month, month and a half old that are out foraging on the flowers. They won't sting you while they're on the flower per se, usually, but they will uh, guard the hive dearly. Let's see what we got on these end frames. Okay, so this is just a bunch of comb. And inside that comb, uh, there are little discs of various colors in there. Some are kind of a yellow or kind of a orange or red. There's not a ton of it in there, but that's pollen. And that is used to help feed some of the developing larvae in the hive. Adult bees, the bees that you see climbing on this frame, they don't eat pollen. They feed it to the larval stage of the developing bee. Most bees in a colony are female. These bees are the males. Let me see if I can grab one. Let's see. They have much larger eyes in fact, they're massive. In fact, these bees cannot fit through the queen excluder either, but they are called drones. The reason I'm being so bold with this drone right now is that male bees do not have stingers. So I could do whatever I wanted to this one and it won't bother me a bit. So a lot of these frames I have, this is a basic frame that's never been used. Wooden frame, but it's got a piece of plastic foundation inside of it. Uh, so whenever we look at a comb of honey that has been made. The bees, you can see where they have built off that foundation. 
and applied their wax and then that's where they make their cells and fill up the honey. Well, that's how humans encourage the bees to do it. Uh, the way God wired them <laughs> is they could build comb without foundation. So this is a frame that is nothing but the wood itself. And you'll notice I can put my finger all the way through it sideways, right? So this is what the bees do in nature. Now this one isn't fully filled up. Uh, oftentimes when you have a frame that's on the side of a box, uh, it usually gets the least attention. But if somebody said, hey, I want some comb honey, this is what they're talking about. And you can actually take this, take a knife, and that's what I'll do. I'll end up cutting right around the edges of that, take it off, and I can freeze it. It'll keep forever, basically. Uh, or I can put it on a dish, use a butter knife, apply it to a biscuit, and it tastes incredible. This is one that is, this has got the foundation. It's just a different color of foundation. Uh, it's actually yellow, so it actually makes everything pop a little bit better. Uh, but once again, to harvest this, I'm gonna, uh, on the side view, you can see how the comb kind of sticks out from the wood a little bit. So when I go to harvest it, I'll take a knife and I'm just gonna run the knife straight down the edge of this and it's gonna remove this wax capping. I'll put it into a machine uh, brilliantly called an extractor <laughs> but what it does is it spins these frames in a circular pattern and slings the honey against the wall of this stainless steel container that I use and all the honey sinks to the bottom I let it flow out of a gate uh, into uh, the storage buckets that I'll use later for bottling uh, and packaging so anyway this is that's your Brazilian pepper honey right there which is awesome